I started to build games many years ago and I had a couple of companies uh, back in Russia doing games. I joined Disney as the product lead on social games. So I had quite some experience in that space. Then three years ago, I decided to change the field and move to non-gaming things. So I joined Facebook as an engineer and helped to build and run the messenger platform team for the past three years. Then last year, um, I noticed the change in the, in the blockchain space and how the things started to progress much faster. So I decided to join several projects working in that space. For example, I helped to build a decentralized exchange. I worked on some other projects in the space. Some of them are live now. So that's how I ended up doing that. So there is a part of the BitGuild that is doing games. Uh, and then there is a part of BitGuild that is doing the platform, right? And the platform consists of three pillars uh, on its own. One of them is the portal, the gaming portal and the main surface uh, from which the games are played. Another is the services in this portal. And the third is the, the developer tools. The portal is the website on which all the games on the platform can be played. And uh, this is more like the discovery service plus your identity and your wallet on the platform. There are several services we want to build for BitGuild platform. One of them is the inventory of your tokens, so you can see all of your items across all the different games. Another is the exchange for non-fungible tokens on Ethereum, the decentralized app that would allow you to, to trade items with different users. And uh, the third is the crowdfunding platform, where you can kind of pre-sale the items for your game while it's still being built, raise the funds and build the game with those funds. As for the developer tools, Right now, if you're a game developer trying to build a game on blockchain, you have to deal with a lot of complexity on that side. You have to know how to sign transactions, how to process the events, what are the, the pools, all of those things, right? And you don't really want to be dealing with that. You want just to build your game. So what we will do, we will abstract all of this complexity in a set of SDKs and APIs to provide the layer for the developers to build on top of. So they can do what they do the best and we help them with infrastructure. Generally, we want to support all of the game genres on the platform. What we see now is that the first wave of the crypto games is very simplistic. There's uh, mostly just the collectibles with very simple game mechanics on, the, on top of them. I think the second wave will be a more complex game logic, uh, still a revolt around the collectibles. And probably the third wave will be the lights and big IP coming later this year, or next year potentially. So it will be evolving. With the mobile right now, the problem is Apple and Google do not allow uh, apps to use a kind of cryptocurrency as the, the payment mechanism in their platforms. So we have to resort to mobile web, and uh, that potential will be, become the main way to consume our games in the short to midterm. We already started to build the portal, and we are ramping up the engineering team now with a plan to launch the first version of the portal in May. That will be a very rough first version, the alpha of the portal, and we really encourage the, the community to help us test and iterate on that version. Mm -hmm. Then, a couple months after that, we want to start launching the services, starting with the list of your items and then the exchange and going forward with the more services on the portal. Right now, the only requirement to play any game on blockchain, including the BitGuild games, is you need to have a browser with Ethereum wallet connected to it. So. Uh, on desktop, for example, those are the Mist and Parity and Brave browsers. You can also use MetaMask as the plugin for the browsers. And you can use one of the mobile wallets with Ethereum browsers built in, such as Trust Wallet. So you can play the game right from the browser from the wallet. So it's really hard to predict what will be the ultimate solution for scalability on blockchain six months from now, 12 months from now. There are two main theories. One theory is that the high throughput blockchain will win and solve all of our problems. Uh, and one of the contenders is like EOS, and there are some other blockchains that are trying to do that. The other theory is that it's not even possible to do it on scale, and that there will be multiple blockchains and side chains for Ethereum blockchain for different projects and like kind of ecosystems. So we will closely look at how it will play out and closely follow the, the developments. And uh, uh, I don't exclude uh, the chance for us to build our own side chain six to 12 months from now. So the main idea of the sidechain is that it will allow us to isolate our transactions in our own pool and not compete for gas and for the capacity with other apps on blockchain. 
One of the main reasons for us to use the Plot token is to uh, make it more accessible for the users, because with the Plot token we control the user experience much tighter. Um, with Ethereum you can uh, have one, two transactions a, a week and it can be a large transactions. With uh, the Plot token you will have more like microtransactions multiple times a day if not a minute. So the type of the experience you get is very different and we want to streamline that and make it more accessible and frictionless for the users. When you're building a game on the Ethereum blockchain now, uh, there is one standard you may want to use for the items, which is ERC721, that defines how the items are transferred and owned. But this is a very bare bones uh, standard. We want to create another layer on top of it that would define higher level concepts like crafting uh, or the containers or things like that, uh, that would allow you to build more complex games on top of that. So our plan is to create this layer and to create those standards and open source them and open them for the community and kind of invite people to contribute to those standards and help us to define this layer. I think what is really special about BitGuild is our dual focus on developer and user experience. On developer side, we really want to simplify the game creation process for the developers, reduce some of the complexity, remove some of the costs they have to bear when building and running the game. On the user side, I think the biggest problem right now the ecosystem has is just the very low number of the users who play those games. If you look at the top games now, you see very low DAU numbers. And uh, this is really the challenge we want to address. And our way of doing so is to identify the pain points the users have in, in different games, such as how do you get your money in? How do you exchange your money? How do you buy the item? What is the wallet? And just hide them one by one under the high level user experience of the platform we have. So at the end of the day, if you just want to put kind of $20 and buy an item, you can do it in one click.